Hey everyone, welcome to Fundamentals of Environment Design. My name is Kalen Chalk, and I'm going to be your instructor for the next eight weeks. I just want to be the first one to welcome you guys to the class. I am very excited to be here, and I hope you are too. And I just want to thank CGMA for having me out for this class in particular. So in this class, we're obviously going to be doing environments, but we're going to be talking a lot about environments as well. Um, we're going to be looking at environments, doing environments, and just kind of studying some of the fundamental um, tools and theories on how to create, you know, compelling immersive environments. So um, in this video right now, we're just going to kind of talk about some of the overall goals, challenges, expectations, and kind of just give you guys like an overview of what's going to be happening in the class, you know, very briefly. So um, after that, we're going to get into our lecture and all that fun stuff. So uh, let's get right into it. And again, welcome to the class, and I hope you guys have a great time. So let's talk about the goals really quickly and what we expect to have right here. So the goals of this class in my mind is to gain necessary fundamentals needed to create environments, right? So that's pretty that's pretty simple, right? Um, obviously to create an environment there's a lot of things you have to know um, in order to create an environment just because environments have so many things. It has people, it has it can have vehicles, it can have creatures, it has mountains, trees, right? And we're gonna kind of break those things down and kind of figure out what are the necessary fundamentals to create environments. Um, also, we're going to be evaluating what creates compelling immersive environments, right? So there are just a million ways to do environments, right? From 3D to drawing to painting and stuff like that. And we're going to evaluate all those methods and kind of just look and figure out, you know, what are people doing currently in the industry that, you know, makes people, you know, feel compelled to look at their environments or feel immersed in their environments. So we're going to talk about a lot of theory like composition and value and all that kind of fun stuff and figure out how artists today are currently using that to you know achieve their goal of making you know cool environments some of the challenges right well you know in the perfect world everything would be very very easy but in a class you're gonna have some challenges you know so what would those kind of be like well um, one of the challenges that I think you guys will probably encounter and something that I've encountered was exploring your own creative approach to environment design there are just a many ways to, to create an environment, as I said before, and there's just a million ways to do things, right, in Photoshop. There's like, you know, five or six ways to do one thing. There's so many tools in Photoshop, you know, how do we know which tool to pick? Well, hopefully in this class, um, you're going to be able to figure that out for yourself, as I'm going to help you guys figure out a creative approach to environment design. Not everyone's going to design an environment the same way. And that's totally okay, right? Everyone has their own kind of niche that, that they want to do. And, and my goal in this class is to help you guys figure out, you know, the best way that is most comfortable for you so that you guys can get the best result. And then also utilizing all the complex tools and theories in environment design. So again, there's so many tools in Photoshop and new tools are always arising, you know, every time they release a new version. And hopefully we're going to break down some of those tools and figure out, you know, which tools are the best tools to use. You know what I mean? And which ones are the most efficient tools? And hopefully, again, everyone's very different. So some people may like certain tools, while other people may not like those tools. And we're just going to try to figure that out for you guys. And hopefully you can find some tools and just processes that, that work for you. Okay? Um, now to the expectations. You know, what, what, do, what do I expect from you guys to have in this class? Well, um, there's going to be a lot of drawing and painting. So um, if you came into this class to draw and paint and do everything environment design and live, sleep, and breathe it, then hopefully you came to the right place. Um, and hopefully I expect you guys to, to really evaluate yourself and uh, really evaluate you know how efficient you are when creating environments, how you can be more efficient, uh, where where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are, and a lot of critical thinking, you know, being able to um, critically think on the job and figure out, you know, what you can do to make your environment the best it can be. And um, also, you should, you should expect to have fun. Um, this class should be fun. I've worked a lot on kind of making it, um, you know, very educational, very informative, but also very fun as well. So if you came to have fun and draw some environments, uh, I believe you have come to the right place. So uh, thanks again. Again, my name is Kalen Chalk, and I'm going to be your, your instructor for the next eight weeks. And again, I'm really, really happy to be here, and I, I hope you guys are too. And again, thank you, CGMA, for having me out. So let's get right into the lecture, okay? I'll see you there. Okay, so here we are to week one, and today the first lecture we're going to have for this week is called Establishing Your Process. Now, what does that mean? I know that sounds very vague, but we're going to go over that, and I'm going to show you guys kind of a little lecture kind of slash demo about how to go about this. 
Um, establishing your process, what, what we're going to be doing today is figuring out a process that is most comfortable to you, um, critical thinking when we encounter problems, and creating solutions on the go. So most of the time when we're painting stuff, um, there's again, there's a million ways to do to do one thing, and we have to figure out which is the, which process is most comfortable for you. Just like in sports, you know, when people shoot a basketball or kick a soccer ball or throw a baseball, right? There are many ways to do it, and people do it which ways that are comfortable to them. Um, also in this lecture, we're going to talk about what happens when you encounter problems. Well, a lot of times when you're painting, not everything will go according to plan, right? A lot of times you're going to get stuck, you're going to get stuck in a rut or have, you know, you know, artist block, all those kind of things. And we're going to talk about ways to kind of how we encounter that and ways to get around it. And that's where we go with creating solutions on the go, figuring out ways to, um, find solutions to your problems while you're painting. A lot of times when you're painting in studios and stuff like that, everyone is busy with their own stuff and there won't always be someone there to help you all the time. Sometimes you have to be your own island and figure things out for yourself. So today we're going to talk about that and how we might go into that, okay? And so usually the best way I like to kind of describe it is I like to do a lot of video game comparisons about talking about how do we create our own process? How do we equip ourselves to uh, make environments? So we're going to talk about that really briefly today. Um, and I call it equipping your art tools, okay? So let's say, let's treat this like a video game, right? Let's say instead of making a painting, right, you're a player in an RPG, okay? So let's say you're a player and this is you, right? There you are, and you're about to do a painting. You know, you, the whole world's ahead of you, right? Very optimistic. You're like, yeah, let's do this. Literally, you say, yes, let's do this, okay? And at the end, at the end, let's say there is a final boss, okay? And there he is. So there's the final boss, or, or AKA maybe the final painting, right? So there he is, he's super evil, and he says, you dare challenge me? He has dangerous fire. <clears throat> He's a final boss, right? So in most RPGs, right, you can go anywhere you want in the world, but if you go to certain places where all the, you know, all the enemies are super high level, you're going to get your butt kicked, right? So if this guy <clears throat> right over here, if he goes over here and tries to fight him and from level one, he's like, you know what? I'm going to go to the final boss right now. If he goes, he's going to get his butt kicked, right? It's pretty simple, right? So what happens in the game? You have to kind of grind it out, right? You have to go, you have to do quests, you have to do stuff so you can level up, so you can equip yourself with the tools to face this guy, right? So let's say level two, right? Level two gives you some armor, right? You're like Mega Man, so you have some armor. Now at level two, could you go and fight the boss? <clears throat> uh, probably not. You'd probably still get your butt kicked and you'd probably still lose. So you still gotta grind it out a little bit more. Okay, how about level three? At right, level three, they gave you a shield. Hmm. Well, maybe you could probably take them on. You got your you got your save crystal right there, right? All RPGs have a save crystal. Don't don't worry about it. So let's say you could take them on. You could try that, but you probably might do it. <clears throat> but it might take you a while, and you probably would still end up losing more times than you would win. So you're like, you know what? I got to keep grinding it out a little bit. And let's say you get to level four. Level four is probably where you might be able to take them on. And you could probably beat them, you know, 50% of the time. But you, you still kind of want the extra, the extra, um, you know, gear to kind of take them on. Uh, and here we go. Let's say that. Let's say you get the final cape, and now you are finally ready. Because you grinded out all these things, you learned different skills, different attributes, different ways of playing. So now you have to accumulate everything you learned from level one to level four. <clears throat> in order to take on the fire bo the final boss and you kill him and everything's great okay so how do we apply this to painting okay let's say instead of we call these levels let's call them tools that we use in environments okay what if instead we called it um, ideas perspective value texture and lighting right so if you just had an idea right and you're like you know what i'm going to start from level 1 my idea and i'm just going to go to the final the final painting right it's probably not going to, it probably won't come out well. Well, why? Because you're probably missing perspective and value and texture, right? You skipped all these things and you just went from your idea and it started painting and you started going to Photoshop and you started painting, right? You didn't plan for it. And so that's what happens with a lot of students is a lot of times they start here or here and they kind of just jump to the final painting and then they wonder why their painting doesn't turn out good. It's usually because they skip some things in order to build their painting up or build their drawing up, right? 
So let's say people go here, right? Let's say people get to uh, perspective and they're like, all right, final painting, let's do this, right? But they're like, oh, I don't know, like the, the colors don't look right. Well, it's probably because your values are off, you know? So sometimes people start all over the place. They start at level three and they're like, you know what? I'm going to go straight from value. And you're like, but you skip perspective in the idea. So your painting doesn't look good. So in this class, I want to teach you guys all the different tools on how to create an environment and show you guys how you can slowly build things up, you know? And sometimes when, you're, when your painting isn't looking good or your environment isn't looking good, chances are you probably kind of either skip the tool or you kind of try to skip to the final boss and then you're getting owned every single time. So in this, so in this kind of class, we're going to talk about how, does, how do we equip ourselves to, to make a final painting um, more efficiently and more effectively and not get our butts kicked and not have to be stuck at level one all the time Okay, so hopefully that analogy makes sense and you'll probably see more uh, video game analogies as we go through So let's get into a short kind of lecture demo that I'm going to show for you guys on how do you establish your own process, okay? Okay, so establishing your own process. How do we go about that? So I grabbed a random photo from uh, Tumblr. I believe this is from a guy named uh, Sparth. He's a very famous concept artist. I got it from his Tumblr. And I grabbed a simple photo. And what I'm going to try to do is recreate it, right? But how does this differ from doing regular studies where you just draw it one for one? Well, in this case, I'm actually going to do a step by step process. And I'm going to screenshot every time there's a change in thought, okay? And what's really important for me when I do this is I'm trying to evaluate how to go about it where the problems are going to be and hopefully I'm going to create a kind of playbook that I could, I could essentially give to someone and they should be able to recreate this photo one for one as well so let's get into it and uh, every time I take a screenshot or every time I do duplicate it and do a new step or change in pace I'm going to write down exactly what I did you know two to three sentences okay so let's go from here so I'm looking at this photo and the first thing I want to make sure that's important is that I have to be able to understand what am I seeing Okay, most people in the everyday world don't see things the way artists see things, the way we break things down. And it's important that you look through things through an artist's eyes. You know, what does that mean? So when I look at this photo, if we kind of zoom in here, most people would see, you know, just rocks and water, and that's totally okay. But what I'm seeing is a composition, and I'm seeing how things are broken down. So if I were to break this down into, you know, certain elements, to me, this is an element. This is an element. Let me just do that better for you. Um, that's an element. That's an element. That's an element. And then these two are elements as well. So for me, I break this down in kind of like a middle ground. You know, these ones are the middle ground. This is definitely um, a foreground. And these two are, you know, also mid ground, but behind the mid ground and then these two are the background and then that's the sky you know those are the elements that I'm counting right now and so it's important that um, you're able to look at things through an artist's eyes so I'm gonna try to recreate this one for one so let's try to do that so when I look at this let me move this over so I can have it right next to it I'm gonna try to just recreate it one for one okay so let me move this over I have this image right here I'm just going to get some line art, okay? So so I'm trying to line it up, you know, get that horizon line figured out. And I'm going to draw pretty lightly, all right? So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to say, okay, if I were to recreate this image, how would I go about it, okay? Now, again, there are plenty of ways to go about making an environment, okay? Um, some people would just start off with just paintings. Some people will start off with, you know, textures, all kinds of things. But for me, this is how I want to go about doing it. Okay, I'm actually going to move this underneath so that way it's better better screen resolution. Yeah, so let's move this over on top. All right, there we go. So I'm making this guy. I'm just kind of blocking it out. So to me, this is kind of my blocking stage. You know, anything goes. All right, there's a little bit of a thing right there, and let's see. This thing kind of blends in a little bit, and we'll have to figure that part out. Okay, right there, um, this guy goes a little bit over the, um, over the horizon line, 
Um, this guy's a little bit right there. And then we have some lines. And let's see. Um, this guy is pretty much on the same plane, I would say. So there's my block in, I would say. It's not a bad block in. I think we're in a, a good spot. <coughs> so that's my step one. Okay. So that, to me, this is where I start to change pace. So I'm going to stop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this over. I'm going to duplicate it first. I'm going to bring this over here. I'll move this over with this guy. And I'll move this over underneath here. And underneath this guy, I'm going to write what just happened. Okay, And this is very, very important to me. Uh, writing stuff out is usually the best way to remember things and to be able to evaluate yourself. So this, to me, is my step one. And I'm going to write, OK. Uh, what did I do here? Well, I did some, some small line art. Um, I established the elements. And I created a simple line art. So that's step one, so not too bad. Okay, so I'm looking at this now, and I'm thinking, hmm, what should I do next? Mm, I don't know, right? There are plenty of steps we can take in Photoshop. Should we start texturing? Should we start lighting? Well, I think we should probably start maybe adding some value. So let's try that.